Today, we're going to be making the Cessna 172 switch panel. For this build, you'll need a faceplate, my 3D printed parts, a Defender security drawer key, I got the 5 8 inch one, a 5 position 30 degree index angle rotary switch, 7 on off switches, 2 dual rocker switches, an M3 set screw, whatever you want to use for circuit breakers, and an interface board. In my case, I'm using an Arduino Mega. Check the MobiFlight website for which ones work. You can also use SimVim or a Leo Bodnar card. Personally, I know part sourcing can be tricky, and if you don't have a 3D printer, that can definitely be a barrier to starting. So, I'm offering this as a kit. You can get the laser cut panel, these 3D printed parts, all the switches and circuit breakers, all from my store at captainbobsim.com shop. First, we're going to paint this panel. Your panel should look prettier. I actually made these 3D printed spacers right here because I cut it wrong the first time. I'll link all of the SVGs and I'll also link the Fusion 360 file so you can adjust it to your own liking. On the left over here, we have the Inkscape version of the panel decals. This SVG can be printed off with a laser engraver and that makes it super helpful. I put them on two separate layers and you just open it with Inkscape and hide the layer you don't want. The second one on the right is the GIMP version. The idea is that you print it out. If you don't have an engraver, never fear, I cut out a panel. I actually used a bunch of milk jugs melted down into a panel, which is kind of cool. Looked horrible, but was a cool idea. Then I printed out this template that I made. I cut all the holes with a drill. And then this rasp part over here, I cut with a hole here four holes in the corner, and then sanded it out with a rasp, basically. It's kind of funny, all the comments about the plastic method. I'd probably buy plastic instead of making it yourself. Just a suggestion. This is a laser cut hardboard panel. It's kind of like a whiteboard without the coating. This is super cheap. I'd probably recommend a curling if you're going for a permanent thing. Right here is the spray paint I'm using. It's this Rust-Oleum Dark Gray. I'm gonna do a few coats. I have a thermal laminating sheet, and I cut it in half, and only used one of the sides. Now I just glue these decals to the panel, and try to align them up as best I can. And if this was acrylic, we could have laser cut the painted acrylic to get the labels but this looks pretty good for now this is the best i can do but wait our best just got better this right here is a laser cut abs panel i spray painted it a few times let it dry and then finally laser engraved the outside and rasterized the little text over here. Compared to the plain panel, pun intended, and the previous panel, I think this is a clear winner. Our next step is going to be the key assembly. The key has to be a five position rotary switch, and it has to spring back to the both position. Hey Daisy, what are you doing wandering around the workshop? Can you say hi to the camera? That's, that's close enough. <laughs> are you afraid of me filming you? No. I designed the key assembly around this Defender furniture like drawer lock. Once you take this apart, you notice that there are lots of parts in this little lock. We need the keys, the 180 degree um, stopper, the shorter arm that doesn't have a bend. We need the screw split washer, whatever it's called. The key assembly, we'll call it that. The key shaft. We don't need this beautiful thing. We don't need the furniture thing. And we do need the nut. We also need a set screw. I'm using an 8mm long M3 screw. We also need this rotary switch. 30 degree index angle. So each switch position is 30 degrees and also five positions it's a lot of parts kind of confusing first things first we have this collet we'll call it <laughs> you can start by putting this collet in the panel the orientation matters the first position right here should be offset so that there are these four tabs right here you should have the first position in the middle of those tabs 
This will leave it something like this, where the flat part is offset about 30 degrees because that's your index angle. Next up, we have this part. You can just slide this 3D printed part over, and uh, up next, we have the nut. We want this to be tightened down. And I kept this pair of pliers right here to keep the angle correct. I think I have it as good as I can get it. It would really be beneficial to put some hot glue down here because then it won't turn like this. Up next, after you have it all glued, we have other parts. So, for this you'll need your key and not feel cool, but to see which orientation the key should go. You can tell which orientation it goes because it doesn't go the other way. We want this top edge to be on the top edge. Pretty self-explanatory. Fantastic. That should be in the off position. And why are we caring so much about this orientation right here and the key orientation? Well, because we want this to, on the off position, have you able to take out the key, but when it's on left or right, you can't take out the key. So that's the big idea. I'm also looking into a way to kind of patch this hole right here because you can also take out the key in both positions which is not ideal because if this was a real plane and you were in the both position and took out your keys lost the keys or something then you would have no way of stopping the plane now that i say that you could just reduce mixture to idle but still it's a safety reason right here is a quick little fix for the remove on both i've 3d printed some little parts right here to basically make it flush on the inside, except for where we want it to open. You can see that the only openings are where we want to remove the key. The reason we have this little opening is because when you put the key in, the tabs move up and down. So you put your fingers over them and don't let them come out, then the lock doesn't work until your fingers give up. At first, I thought it was only this side that moves, because that's the most obvious side, but I realized, if we take this in slow motion, that this side moves as well. You can then put the little two spacers over here. You shouldn't have to force it. If you're forcing it, you're probably bending the little 3D printed part. There we go. If we put the key in, we can go all the way to start. But we can't remove it unless it's in the off position. This, however, has been negatively impacting the return to both function, so I will be tweaking this. I'm sure as I use it a ton, it'll start to basically sand itself away. I think some WD-40 in here would work wonders. Now this is another area of complexity. This needs to line up so that you have the correct angle set. I'm probably going to end up 3D printing a small version of this that's a 360 degree angle. We'll just have the stops only limited by the switch. Uh, but for now, we're going to use the metal piece. Let's see if this works. It doesn't because I can't go any more right. So we'll need to twist this. Let's see. Does it work? I'd like more. So we'll rotate it again. That looks like way more than enough play. Shoot! And we have enough play here. So, the final answer is, when this is all aligned with the off position, da -da -da -da, you should have the stopper thing opposite of it. So, just align this however it works. You should be able to hit the off position and the start position without a problem. However that works, it's good for me. Looky here, I designed the part and 3D printed it, it works well, and I don't have to align it ever again. Woohoo! Now, same deal with this key right here. It looks like we're going to align this right here. So it'll be kind of pretending the 180 degree stops are aligned, and then follow that line and make sure it can go. This works, it can travel its full weight. And back here, it can travel its full weight. To secure this, put it on off, and then remove the key, and it can sit flat. This piece right here requires two screws. One is the screw that attaches it to here, and the other is the set screw. So this next action is a little bit weird, 
because there are a lot of things to do at once. But you need to make sure that this tab is aligned and then put this screw through its little screw slot. You can put the split washer on here too with a little bit poking out. You can just screw it onto this key right here. Screw it first by hand and then by tool. You really want to tighten it down because uh, this is one of the places it can get out of whack. We do want this switch. First of all, you want to reset it to the zero position and then block off any of the extra pins. So this has a bunch of little numbers. We only want five positions. Check that there's only five positions. So it'll be much easier to right now than on here. The zero position counts as one, two, three, four, five. And now we just put this through, put the washer, make sure to catch it, and then press it through. Now I have a little boo-boo from these things, but uh, now I can say that I've definitely put my blood and sweat in. If I have to do one more of these prototypes though, I will be able to say I've put in my tears. Use needle nose pliers to tighten this down. Now the last step is to put in the set screw. The set screw goes through right here. It's the M3 eight millimeter screw. We have our working key. So if we put it in the off position, it's off, it will it work. Right, left, both, and start. Oh, whoa, shoot, 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 both. In the real plane, it springs back to both. So these are six millimeter long M3 screws. You can also use the eight millimeter screws so that you only have to buy M3 eight millimeter screws and that works out perfectly. You should use a better spring. This is one that came off of the printer mileage may vary set it to both so if it goes further than this it should spring back to start i designed a ton of these holes because if you can't make it perfect make it adjustable that's what the people say so now it's pretty easy you just basically screw on the spring over here and over here and then once it hits the spring it should go back before you screw on the other end give it a test to see if it'll work actually it won't work well enough so Let's try a different spring actually. I finally made it to Harbor Freight and I got this spring assortment right here. I do feel kind of ripped off though because I had to pay for 200 springs and I only used one. They charged me like 200 times more than I should have paid for, right? Let's see if this spring works any better. Man, like butter. With springs, you have compression springs, like the one in your pen and extension springs like this. This is the spring I used. I do have to give credit where credit is due. This spring back to fourth position was heavily inspired by the Allen Glenn Cessna 172 simulator. It's a great project and I'd highly recommend you give it a visit. The only thing we have to do now is to put a Cessna remove before flight tag on it. You can get this if you go to um, Wichita, Kansas. You can use an even clickier switch for a better tactile feedback. I know that's what gamers are all about. But next, we have a few other switches. Get out of frame. I don't care if there's junk, it just can't be in frame. Now we can put in both of the dual rocker switches. You can paint this avionics master switch white, or you can totally forego the pre-purchased switches like this and go with some 3D printed ones. It already looks like a 172 switch panel. I am excited. Up next, we have these seven switches. For calling birds and a partridge in a pear tree. Apparently, we have to tighten them or something. Yeah, we should probably do that. Everything is constructed except for, like, nine things. Hey, first try. This, my friend, is a real aircraft circuit breaker. It is a Tycon circuit breaker, it's 15 amps, and one of these would go under a Yonix bus tube, right here. This is pretty cool, and it was only like $9 or something, but $9 times nine is 81, which easily outweighs the entire cost of the panel. So, I'm going to 3D print some. I 3D printed these circuit breakers and then printed them in silver and black PLA. 
and I think they work pretty well. I'm really proud of the design because it's actually aligned pretty well with the actual aircraft circuit breaker. To put the circuit breakers in, I just press fit them inside the circuit breaker housing. Now when you're doing your pre-flight, you can rub your fingers across and see that all of the circuit breakers are pressed in. You could also change the insert and have one popped out if you're feeling really crazy. The decals for the circuit breakers were done pretty similarly to the decals for the panel. They're just printed out and glued onto the circuit breakers. Come on, I'm short one number. <gasps> ah! Here we go. This is how the circuit breaker labels turned out. I did use a little bit of an off-white filament, so it's not a perfect white, so it doesn't match the paper, but I still am pleased with the result right here. You may be wondering why the back of these circuit breakers are so tall and thick, even though they could just be a little dime, and that is to allow upgradability to actual aircraft circuit breakers. In the future, I'm going to design any simulated circuit breakers as real and as close as I can to actual dimensions. So this is why the simulator circuit breakers are the same size. A real circuit breaker would have a little bit of play, about a millimeter, but these simulated circuit breakers don't have any play at all, basically. They're just pressed fit in, and if you want to adjust the height, you can adjust it either in the slicer or by going into the model. Up next, we're going to replace these stock dual switches with some 3D printed ones from JVR Sim. I did not design these, but I really do like the design and how they work. They also fit with these two pole switches, which makes this very convenient. You can use either the two pole switches or the one pole switch. If you want to upgrade these switches to these 3D printed ones, you're going to need these 3D printed parts in this Thingiverse link over here. You're also going to need these two switches with two nuts for each switch. You'll also need a rod, a two millimeter one is preferred, and then if you don't get the right size, you can use a drill bit to ram it out a little bit. Let's start off with this little piece, and these were designed for a very specific switch. I didn't have the 100% correct switch, so I'm using these ones I already have a lot of. These small switches, you can get a pack of 10 for like $3, so it makes these a little more economical than these which I think are $7 for the seven. I'm tightening down this first nut to act as a shim to, to adjust the height just a little bit, and then I'm using another one to tighten it down. Tighten it to a point it doesn't easily turn. Now, we have this rod, and this rod is going to go through this piece, and also through these two pieces. If it doesn't fit immediately, you might need to pour it out some more. And then put the covering on top of the main assembly and then put these switches in. The hole right here should align. You can then put your 2mm rod in or a toothpick if you like to be resourceful. And then snap off the ends. And this is important because these will interfere with the side of your panel. There you have an operational two-position switch. Now we can put it into the switch panel. Well, not exactly. It's not a one-for-one -one fit, so you'll have to trim it down a little bit. It is an almost identical thickness, however, so that works in your favor. I made this so you can edit it with Fusion 360. Right here, once you upload the .f3z file, you can open it and make any of the edits you want to. Then, over under Modify, you can go under Change Parameters, so you can change the circuit breaker diameter, and stuff like that. Because this assembly actually references other assemblies, you need to be able to edit those parameters too. This is a sub-assembly, as you'd call it. I can edit this in place by clicking this little pencil, and then we're as if we're editing this assembly. You can then actually modify the parameters over here and change, for example, how thick the panel is, how long the shaft is, and you can even change how long from the switch to the shaft is, so from here to here. That means that this should work with any size Defender security drawer key. Once you're done, just click this end edit in place and all your changes should update. 
Another thing is that there are actually two versions of this panel. There's the default one that uses the default switches, which I don't recommend, and then there's the JVR panel right here. This JVR panel is a little taller than the default switches, so I actually made this spacer right here you can get. This little part basically makes it so that both switches are compatible with the JVR sim. So here we have it. We have our functioning switch panel. Off, right, left, both start. Master on, off, fuel pump, beacon, landing, taxi, nav, strobe, keto heat, avionics, and all of our circuit breakers. You can do a lot of checklists with these because they have these circuit breakers that you can check are popped in. They always are, spoiler alert, unless you have something tragically wrong. And I plan to develop this further with my Cessna 172 project. I already can tell there are things that I don't like and I'm going to improve upon them. This is how the switch panel looks like from the back. Stay with me next week because I'm going to show you how you can wire everything over here to the simulator. This will be an updated version of my last switch panel wiring video because now I know how to do the masking for all of these different lights over here. And this time I'm also going to show you an FS2020 exclusive version. To be frank, these designs take a lot of time, prototyping, work, and editing to get them out the door. If you'd really like to support the Cessna 172 project and these videos, feel free to donate and support this work on Patreon. I'd really like to thank my current Patreons, David and Similar, for helping me with this. If you want to join the Patreon crew and help the development of the Cessna 172 project, as well as these mini projects that don't necessarily have to be part of the Cessna 172 project, consider visiting the Patreon and maybe even joining. Have a fantabulous rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good one.